Hello, everybody. I'm Tori McElhaney, joined with Falcons GM, Terry Fontenot. We're back together again. We're back together again. The Terry Tory Power Hour. Now, <laughs> the last time that we sat down and had a conversation, just the two of us, it was, I believe, before the draft. And yep. something that you and Arthur both said at that time, I've kind of stuck with a little bit. You both said at the time that this 53-man roster was going to be difficult to make. Yep. Now that we are through the initial first cutdowns of the initial 53-man roster, how much did that statement ring true in what decisions y'all had to make over the past week? Yeah, it, it was challenging. And even you look at now we have uh, 14 players on the practice squad now, and we'll continue to build up our practice squad. But uh, the players that are on the practice squad, there's a lot of players that are, are going to help us win this year. And, and, and they're good players in the NFL. And that was hard because we had to sit down and go through the cut process with them and expose them to the other teams. And so I think that's just a testament to when you look at our practice squad and the guys that are on there and you look at the roster, the 53 men, top to bottom, every one of those players can go out there and help us win. And, and so it, it was a challenging roster to make. And our mindset is we're going to continue to – it's always fluid. And we're always doing everything we can do. Again, someone that's on the practice squad can be on the active roster before you know it. They can be playing in the games. We look at it, it's like a 53 plus 16. And, but it was a challenging roster to make. It was challenging to go through the process of making those cuts. And we know every one of those players that are here and also some players that aren't here right now because we're always looking are going to help us uh, have a, a sustained winner this year. When I kind of want to break down the 53-man roster as it stands right now, and I kind of wanted to start with the quarterback because it's obviously a position that everybody wants to hear about. Now, yep. you, you all made the decision to carry three quarterbacks this year, and yep. I, I believe that there were 13 other teams in the league that also made that decision. And something that I feel like everybody should know is there's the emergency quarterback rule that now has gone into effect this year. When it came to keeping Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, and Logan Woodside, how much was the emergency quarterback rule in the back of your head versus what Logan Woodside was able to do in the preseason? That's, that's a great question, and, and I would say it was more about Logan okay. as opposed to the new rule. And um, Because if you look at the quarterback position and how we have it structured, we um, made Desmond the starter at the time that we did to be, be very clear with what we're looking for in the quarterback we're signing. We need to do that for – when we brought in uh, Taylor Heineke and we wanted to be really clear and transparent with the vision for Taylor. And we're excited to have Taylor. And so with Logan, I would say it was very much um, up in the air and we're very open to, we can keep three, we can keep two. But with what he did through the off season, in practice, it was very consistent, the, the worker, the mental, everything that he did. And then he got in the games and, and he really battled and competed and um, when we go through those preseason games, we put guys in tough situations. Yeah. And it's not, uh, it's not just about doing everything you do to win, get, win the games. That's the regular season. In the preseason, the objective is to well, we're doing everything we can do to win the regular season. So let's focus on evaluating this roster the right way and doing everything we can do to get prepared. So he was put in some tough situations like a lot of other players were, but we wanted to see him in those stressful moments and how they, he would respond. And um, he, he did a heck of a job the entire offseason, and he really earned that job. Yeah. Sticking with the quarterbacks, I, I did want to ask a couple questions about Desmond Ritter because here is somebody who I believe you said, gosh, this has probably been months ago at this point, right when we first talked about Desmond being named the starter, and you said that you really believed in his makeup, his maturity, his leadership. Those were kind of the three key points that you made. And I know fans haven't seen a lot of Desmond Ritter in, in game time situations in the preseason. Obviously, all that's by design. But you guys have. You all have seen yep. in meeting rooms and out on the practice field and in those joint practices with Miami. Yep. So how has your view of Desmond Ritter evolved as this preseason went on? Yeah, he continues to grow and, and he continues to get better in all areas of his game. And when you play that position, it's not always – just about the physical talent, which we know he has physical talent. And yet we see a lot of guys with physical talent that don't quite handle everything the right way, but it's it's between the ears. It's it's right here in your chest. It's it's everything that he's about because there are gonna be some ups and downs. There's gonna be challenging moments. This season is almost like a roller coaster and you better be prepared for that. You better be able to handle the pressure and handle the tough times. Not only handle the, the failures, but handle that success. When you're doing really well, you got to be able to handle it the right way. But we believe in in, in Desmond in those areas, and so 
obviously has the physical talent and we like all those factors, but it's all about who he is as well and how he's going to handle the ups and downs in the season, uh, the successes, the failures, and you have to have someone that can really handle that adversity to get to where we're going. I love looking at initial 53-man rosters and trying to find trends throughout the decisions that y'all make. What I thought was so interesting and intriguing about this 53-man roster in particular was the fact that you guys decided to keep every single guy that y'all drafted in this 53-man roster. And yep. I, I know that that's sometimes not the case with some teams across the league. Everybody has different philosophies. But what did you see from this rookie class over the course of by the time that they got in here at the end of May to where we sit right now at the end of August – to solidify them sticking around on this 53-man roster? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And because we don't, our mindset is we have 90 players in the building. However they got here doesn't matter. And we're very candid about that with the players and with everyone. How you get here does not matter. We're going to get put the best 53 plus 16 on the field, the best 48 to 49 players on a weekly basis. And it's a very fluid, and we always talk about this, when you – it's not like we announce the 53 and have a pizza party and, and we're all on scholarship. It's no different than I have to come in every day and earn my job. Every player, every coach, every staff member, everyone earns it on a daily basis. So there's no complacency and there's no – so it's constantly fluid. And yet, however you got here, it doesn't matter whether uh, – obviously you, you got a young man from Griffin, Georgia that went all the way up to Canada and – He's, he's going to play a lot of good football for us this year. He wasn't drafted. And so it, it doesn't matter how you got here. We truly believe that. And yet, as you talk about this rookie class, every one of those guys earned a, the right to be on this initial 53-man roster. And you go from top to bottom. And it's not just about how they performed at their particular position, but it's, it's about the mental. It's about the trust factor. They have versatility to do some different things. And can we – trust them if we have to put them in the games, can they help in the kicking game? All those things factor into it because sometimes you'll have a player, as you know, that you draft, they end up on the practice squad for a few years and they end up being good players for you. So everybody's on uh, different at different stages in their development. And that, that doesn't mean if you let a draft pick go, that doesn't mean you're giving up or if you let a – but that said, every one of these, these draft picks, for they earn the right to be on this initial 53-man roster is so excited, I think, in terms of the fan base, is so excited to see Rashawn Robinson for, for good reason. Yep. He's a fun fun guy to watch. I've enjoyed getting to see him actually in person over the course of training yeah. camp. When it comes to what Bajan is for this organization, obviously a, a top 10 draft pick, how have you seen him kind of handle everything that has been thrown at him? Because what Arthur Smith is asking him to do in this offense, I mean, Bajan's talked about it. It's a lot. There's a yep. lot kind of like drinking water out of a fire hydrant. And yep. he said he's really committed to taking it day by day and not letting it become too big. How have you seen him take that responsibility in step, even though he's only been in this organization, in this building for a few months. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive, just the way he's handled himself, because it is. And uh, I mean, he has a lot put on him, and I know the coach, the staff, has a plan of exactly how to go through it, And but he's handled everything in stride. And when you have a player like that, and it, there's a lot of pressures from every area, as we talk about handling adversity and talk about handling ups and downs, you got to be able to handle all the off-the-field stuff and all the – but I would say he has a rare maturity about himself and to, to be able to handle the first time we met him. And I think back to the, the when we spent time with him in, in Austin, Texas, you saw a rare maturity and someone that has handled everything in stride. And so we fully expect him to handle things the same way. But he has an intensity about him, too, where everybody sees the nice smile and the nice. But he locks in and he can go to that dark place and lock in and do whatever he has to do to get the job done whether you're talking about in the building, on the practice field, and we know it's going to carry over to the games too. So a rare maturity, but yet he can flip that switch and go to work. Another rookie that I, I think I have really enjoyed getting to know this offseason and this preseason is Matthew Bergeron. He is a guy who you, you moved up in the draft to get. Yeah, He's a guy who has now come in here, and because of injuries and people moving around the roster, this is someone who is going – to be the starter week one at left yep. guard. 
What have you seen from him specifically outside of the fact that he can speak French in an, an amazing way? I, <laughs> I, I I didn't know that French was his first. So y'all have had conversations in French? Uh, and, well, okay. I, I obviously didn't speak the French. He did. But I'll <laughs> leave that to him because my accent, I don't think, could handle it. <laughs> but what have you seen from him in regards to maybe even the acceleration of his development to be able to go in and be a starter? Yeah, he, he's another he's another guy that, Obviously, our scouts loved him throughout the entire process, and I still remember, again, our first meeting with him when we're in uh, Indianapolis and sitting down with him and, and having discussions with him, and, man, you felt his presence right away, and you felt a natural confidence, nothing forced, but a natural confidence, And but it was there's a humility about him as well, and so you know that he's going to really go to work, and that position isn't a position that's easy just to step into. And we, we really believe in our offensive line and the players we have, the players he's playing next to. And so to be able to step in and earn their respect, that's the first thing he has to do, earn their respect, earn the respect of the locker room. But for him to be able to step in and do that at a position like that, it's not like he's rotating in at, at a skill position. This is a, this is a violent position that it's every snap every day, but he's just, again, taking everything in stride. And the, whether we're talking about in the meeting room, in the weight room, on the field, he has really good physical talent, but he's another guy that has it between the ears. Mm -hmm. And I, to, to go on to that, too, I, I think people sometimes forget this is a guy who didn't take any guard reps in college. I believe his first <clears throat> guard reps were at the Pro Bowl or not the Pro Bowl, the Senior, the senior Bowl. bowl yep. Yeah, the Senior Bowl. So this is a guy you just put him right in the Pro Bowl. You have a lot of confidence I, I, in Matthew Bergeron. I, He's become just... such a favorite of the <laughs> roster. I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping to see some. Insight. Once that happens, then you can always go back to this take and say I predicted it. Right, yeah, I'll tell people. <laughs> right here on Tori and Terry. Just Tori and Terry power round. <laughs> now let's let's talk a little bit about something that I'm very intrigued in terms of this offense, and it's something that I've heard you say. It's you have to have unselfish players to play this type of football, and what Arthur Smith is asking this offense to be. Do you feel like you have those players in house right now, and why? And what has shown you that you do have the right players? Yeah, well, with, great question. We worked so hard on the makeup, and and I believe our scouting department um, is second to none in the NFL. And the work that they put in to find out exactly who these players are, because it's not just about adding talent. Whether we're talking about the draft, whether we're talking about free agency, whether we're talking about players off the street, whether we're talking about all the unique ways. Uh, XFL, CFL, all the unique ways we bring players in, we have to make sure they have the right makeup, they have the right fit. And that means that they, they have to be smart, they gotta be tough and competitive, they have to be able to come here and work the way we work because we wanna be the hardest uh, working program in the NFL. They have to have all those attributes to fit that, but also, like you said, they have to be unselfish because this is gonna be an unselfish program. Whether we're talking about offense, defense, kicking game, you have to be unselfish. So I would say the first step in that is us trying to make sure we get the right players that fit that. And then once they're in the building, as we go through this process, then we constantly see it and we've seen it and, and just the way they practice, the way they work, the way they do things. And we do believe we have a very, very unselfish team, but it starts with, with bringing in the right players. I want to switch gears a little bit, talk about the defense. We've been talking about the offense a lot. I got to give the defense some time. I, what have you seen, obviously going into Ryan Nielsen, his first year as a defensive coordinator, but what I think is so intriguing when I talk to these defenders, especially the guys who are going to be kind of your guys on this defense, they say that they go to sleep every night, and when they go to sleep, they just hear attack and aggressive yeah. rattling around in their head. That comes from Ryan Nielsen. I, I know that. I've had conversations with him, but what – as you kind of are, are looking at what this defense can be, how has Ryan Nielsen's mentality as a defensive coordinator permeated to the defensive unit as a whole? Yeah, well, what, like you said, he's the defensive coordinator, so it starts with him. But you go down that staff, and whether you're talking about Hux or Jerry or Jack, you go through that, obviously Frank Bush, you go through that whole that attack, aggressive, the violence, the competitiveness, that permeates through that whole defensive staff. And, and again, that, that's the way that whole staff is wired. And then, again, the players, because it's one thing, obviously, we, we, we love our coaches in regards to that, that mentality, the teaching aspect, and yet, like we keep talking about, you better bring in the right types of guys. And because if we want to be an attacking, aggressive, violent football team, you have to have the right types of players 
or they're not going to fit. They're not going to work in the weight room the way we need to. They're not going to work on the field, and, and, and it's not going to carry over unless you bring in the right guy. So that's what you appreciate that. You appreciate the players that we have here, and it is, again, from Ryan, and you go through that whole defensive staff, it's, it's about being aggressive. Did it almost surprise you how quickly that happened where they all bought into this one idea considering all of the guys that – that has been brought in. I mean, you're talking about coaching staff, but also David Onyemata, Clayus Campbell, Bud Dupree, Caden Ellis, Jesse Bates. I mean, I could go on and on. Is it, or does it almost kind of reinforce that you got the guys that you wanted? Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, focusing on that makeup. And then once you get them in the building and cause it takes time to, because these are, you just said, you have players from different places that are coming and now, they're getting to know each other, but once they see those common threads, and I think that there's a mutual respect right away when you look across and, and wherever it is, and obviously Bud Dupree's never played with Grady, and Grady's never played with David and Calais, and you keep going through, and Kate and Troy have never played together. Jeff Okuda and, and AJ have never played together, but they know each other, and there's always been a mutual respect. Um, Jesse Bates and, 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 and Richie and the – there's a mutual respect with those guys because of the type of football they play. And again, chemistry is something that the communication part, that's all things that you continue to, to build on as you get players together, but you know the types of guys you have. And so I think they, they respect each other. I think it's really great. And just to kind of wrap up, because I know we've been talking for a minute, but I, I've always been super fascinated by just the salary cap in general and yeah. the, and being able to pinpoint the moves that you guys have made over the last two years to get you to the point that you were leading into this off season. When, when you think back to the last two years of trying to get out from under the salary cap constraints and getting to a healthy point, moving forward, how do you remain at that healthy level? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and it, I think you have to, have consistency in what you do. You always have to think long term. You can never just be a prisoner of the moment and just do whatever you can do to for today. You have to think long term. And like we say, we never say we're just trying to win this game. We're trying to have a sustained winner. And and, and we're building a championship roster one player at a time. And but not just for one year, we want a sustained winner. And you see it all the time, not just in, in football, in any sport or any walk of life when you're just thinking in the moment you're making decisions just about right now, because sometimes you have to make sacrifices in everything we do for right now that's gonna help you later. And so having that discipline, so we have to be consistent and, and have discipline in, in the way we make decisions. And if we do that, then we can cons consistently continue to win right now, but then also we're not putting ourselves in a tough situation in the future. So I would say we just have to be consistent and have discipline. And, and I, I know, from having been here, the amount of transactions that I've written over the course of these yeah. years, that's the, you. It really does go back to the point of the the fluidity of which this roster will have has had will continue to have. Y'all actually still have some cap space, which yep. I think is really, really interesting considering yep. the amount of moves that y'all have made. Now, in I I want to say it's like according to online sources. Now I don't know. I could go over to Chris Olson and probably ask what the actual number is, but it's around 12 and a half million. Is that more of a cushion for you guys? Or is that something that you're actively thinking about? Like, how can we still add to this roster? Well, well really, it's, it's such a, that number is, you can probably, different websites probably have different numbers. But it's one of those things, I don't know exactly how to articulate it and put in words. But it really just depends on you. When you cut down the roster and when you, then it's going to change that number. And then in your mind, you know the what you need to have in terms of cushion for the year, but then you also know, okay, these are the contracts that we need to make some adjustments with to get us to this point. And so it depends on the big contracts. So there's a lot of, it's hard to articulate it, yeah. but it's those like numbers, yeah. yeah, those numbers are never accurate. It's kind of like if, if somebody looks at your bank account and says, and they can say, <laughs> this is how much money Tory has, but they don't understand, okay, but I already have to spend this, this, and this on on my mortgage on my car. So that's really gone. But you know what? I got this in my pocket and I got this in the in, in, in some gumbo in the freezer, you know, in the mattress. 
So it, it, there's so many factors to it. So it's hard to look at one number. But all that being said, in our mind, it's about doing everything we can do right now and, and making sure we're prepared to go in the season and then making sure we have the right cushion in the season. And look, if we feel like we need to make a move at any point, we're going to do the best we can to do it. We're all about winning right now. But like I said, we're going to have that discipline and have that consistency to where we're not going to do something that's going to put us at a bad point in future years. Now, very I know that was a lot. No, and I, I don't I know if it's... I, and I think fans appreciate it too because it is... There are so many hidden elements <clears throat> that I think just casually casual watchers of football, myself yeah. included, that you learn something new every day about, oh, this need, you need to allot this much for this or this much for this. I think it's all yep. very fascinating. Yep. So we're about a week away from first kickoff of, of the season. Mm -hmm. What excites you about, one, the team that y'all put – but what this 2023 season could look like. So, so excited about this team. And it's about, it's what you see every day. It's what you see at practice today, the energy, wherever you are, wherever you are in the building, wherever you are at practice, there's so much excitement because it's, everybody's excited about the process. They're excited to go out there tomorrow and do everything you can do, again, to get ready uh, to kick it off 9-10 against Carolina and get the, um, do everything we can do to get this season started the right way. And it's gonna. It's the same thing in the next day of practice. And whether you go in the meetings, whether you see the guys in the weight room, whether you see the guys in recovery in the training room, everything, everybody in this building is doing everything they can do to get prepared to start the season off right, and then to have a really successful season and win a lot of games this year. So it, it, you're excited about the team because of we, we do believe we have a um, we have a talented football team, and yet we have the right makeup. We have a great locker room. And they're passionate and they're going to do everything they can do every game to win. Fantastic. I think that's a pretty good note to end on. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a really, I think, interesting and important conversation just about 53 main roster construction and as well as how you guys got here. So yep. thank you so much for joining me. Awesome. Thank you, Tori.